Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a speed paint of some random landscape that I did. It's not my best painting by any means, but uh, I feel like it's important as an artist to sometimes show what you don't like or what you feel like is not very good. Um, and other people will probably agree that it's not very good, but that's okay. Um, but today the focus is more on story time where I'm going to be discussing things that I am learning as I'm getting older. Anyway, enjoy! Everybody gets old. Er. And since we were wee little ones, okay, maybe we were in our 20s, we became more aware of our mortality. For me, I was always keenly aware about the mist that I am, and as a result, I've been living a relatively low-risk existence. Now that doesn't mean I didn't try things or experiment here and there, but I've always used that extra bit of caution to help prolong my life on this planet. Actually, it has more to do with the pain. I'm terrified of pain. My career can actually be a dangerous place if you're not careful. So as a scientist, I'm exposed to a variety of chemicals that, I can, that can wither my uterus, and I always feel a twinge in my boobs when I open a vial that says mutagen on it. I have heard stories of people exploding their faces when synthesizing active ingredients. Seriously. No, seriously. I have also heard stories of people drinking cyanide to commit suicide. Uh, seriously. Fortunately, these instances occurred at another facility that I no longer work with. Huzzah! Sorry for the derailment. The point is that I'm typically a very careful individual in all that I do based on circumstances and a general fear of pain. At any rate, being as careful and low risk as possible, I encounter the dreaded oldness that comes with being a human person. Our parents, peers, partners, and other relationships that begin with the letter P can prepare us as much as they want, but you don't truly understand until you begin to live it. So with that being said, here are five things I'm learning about getting old. -er. Number one, weight gain. Okay, so this probably isn't new. Generally, as our bodies age, our cells and our processes within our system slow down. Our cells are continuously dividing and ultimately dying, but our new cells are just not quite as good as the ones they sprouted from. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like making a copy of a copy of a copy of a vibrant picture. The colors just slowly become duller as the copies increase. In the end, the final copy is worthless and gets pitched or recycled waste not. Our cells actually get pitched though. Ain't no recycling happening here. Because of this, our whole system becomes slow and sluggish and it actually takes more for older folks to lose weight. I remember in high school, my diet during lunch cost me a whole dollar. This was the mid nineties, y'all man, things were cheaper. I ate a bag of white cheddar Cheez-Its and one of those giant New England chocolate chip brownies. I don't even know if they make those anymore, to be honest, but uh, it was called like New, New England chocolate chip brownie. It had like nuts in it and stuff. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, <laughs> Cheez-Its were 40 cents and the brownie was 60. So that was probably a 600 calorie lunch. Not horrible, no, but I also ate donuts for breakfast or bacon or something heart stopping and finishing with a giant meal of three hours of grazing the pantry. I never counted calories and I didn't work out, but it didn't matter. I was thin. Now, today, I bike five miles three times a week and weight lift. Pay attention to what I eat with whole foods, low sugar, high protein, you know, all the popular things right now. And it's super hard to lose just one pound and the workouts are painful, which brings me to my next point. Number two, pain. So it's painful for me to wake up. It's painful for me to walk down the stairs in the morning. And it's painful for me to stay active for long periods of time during the day. You know why? Plantar fasciitis, knee problems from figure skating as a kid. General oldness. I'm developing things that I would never have thought of when I was twisting around being generally spazzy and stupid as a kid. Remember the cell copies? Well, you can damage things and reprogram your body to create copies of this damaged state. For me, it was when I figure skated as a young lass. I have a, quote, landing leg in which the knee is suffering to this day because it remembers how I abused it. And now it's taking revenge. And there are other things too, like me not being able to eat certain things because my stomach doesn't like them anymore. Or, you know, 
IT band stretching and pain and heat, pain, dry eyes, you know, just pain. Weird things that you would never have thought of that just kind of crop up. But anyway, that's all I'm going to go through with pain there because it's a very broad subject and it's different for everybody. And, but yeah, as you get older, some of the things that you maybe did as a child start to manifest when you're older or, you know, just if you didn't do anything or if you were just a slug when you were a kid, you're still going to suffer pain when you're older because your body just, yeah, doesn't know how to handle stuff like that anymore. And as a side note, when I see kids like flopping around and landing on their knees and crawling around and doing crazy things, I get this nasty thing in the pit of my stomach that makes me want to throw up every time because I think about my knees and the things that if I were flopping around on the floor, how much pain I would be in. Yeah. (laughs) Number three, skin and hair. I'm not sure if you've heard of this and it makes sense from a scientific point of view, but our bodies tend to go through these cycles and things change. So our cells turn over and different things happen. So my first example here is my hair. My hair, as far as I remembered, was pretty straight. I had gotten a couple perms in my early years, like one time in third grade, and I think again when I was like 11 or something like that. Um, but for the most part, it was my hair was straight. So this is a picture of me when I was 14 before I colored my hair, and I would let it air dry always. Fast forward to now. This is not straight. This creature showed up in my 20s, and I had no idea what to do with it. Do I feed it? Do I take it for a walk? This is when I started blow drying and straightening my hair. Most of the time it was fine, but the beautiful thick Midwest steam would always give me a little halo of frizz no matter how well I straightened it. And if the moisture was high enough, curls. I'm almost 40 now and it's taken me this long to figure out how to make it look okay. Pro tip, lots of product. Moving on to skin. Let me just begin that by saying that adult acne is real. I never had acne as a kid and now... Well, again, like the hair, what the heck do I do with this new population that's moving to my face? I deal with it. That's what. I cover it when I can. I pick at it when I shouldn't. I get cystic acne once a month and deal. However, acne is not my only problem. I've been developing what I call age spots or liver spots for those that know that term. Here they are in all their glory. My husband... (laughs) He's very kind, and he's like, those are just freckles. He's so sweet and naive. As a side note, I've been using this brightening serum from Sephora that has actually taken this down several notches, and if you're interested, it's linked below. It's called, like, Vital Grape Something Something by Claudalie, I think. It's kind of like a watery uh, consistency, but and it smells kind of funky, but, man, it's taken it down pretty good. At any rate, moving on with more bodily changes, that leaves us to number four, allergies. I had some serious allergies as a kid. Um, Not many, but serious ones. I discovered my allergy to grass when I was rolling around in it one day after school. Note, spaz. This allergy was a slow-moving pendulum of doom over one weekend where random parts of my face would start to inflate. Three days later, my eyes swelled shut and my lips looked like botched collagen job. To the e-room! This was the worst allergy I ever had, but it cemented grass pollen as potential murderers in my low-risk life handbook, and I therefore minimally mowed grass or rolled around in it. I didn't even walk barefoot through it. However, I never had seasonal allergies. I just had really this major one. I was also allergic to cats, which... I now own three, so say la vie. This year is proving to be a changing point in my allergies. So you may have noticed, maybe not so much right now, but it's it's there a little bit, but you may have noticed my snuffly and annoying voice from time to time, which is because of my increasing intolerance for the outdoors. There was a time where I had outgrown the grass and cats and whatever else to gain something else, and I have no idea what. I'm going to see an allergist in about a week and a half, but until then, I'm suffering without antihistamines. I can't take them for two weeks prior to my appointment. I've never had an allergy test because they were never a huge problem and it was pretty obvious what they were. 
So I just avoided the grass and like I never had cats. Um, but now though, I guess I'll find out. And if I'm allergic to cats again, I'll be really sad and I'll just keep taking shots or whatever I need to do so that I can live with my children. Anyway, the fifth thing I'm learning about getting older is observing my peers. So this is an interesting topic and there are jokes that go around about it, but there's a lot of truth in these jokes. You, so your peers get married, have kids, their kids graduate, they empty nest, midlife, stop caring, then die. I'm at a point where some of my peers have children graduating high school. So just last year was my 20 year high school reunion. 2018 is my husband's 30 year. And if you aren't ground enough to see this, it might become a depressing thought. So I personally have no kids. When I was young, I wanted to be surrounded by children and stay at home, take care of my husband and growing brood of ankle biters. I didn't even want to go to college. Alas, God had a different plan for me, and upon reflecting on that, I'm glad. Unfortunately, some people can't see their circumstances positively and cycle through the shoulda, coulda, woulda phase of thinking. This is only exacerbated by social media, with all the lovely pictures of your high school or college friends posting photos of their families and their great vacations and their swelling blessings. These are definitely blessings and fun to look at, but if I didn't have the right mindset, I could spiral into depression wondering why it never happened for me. Now, I can only speak from a childless point of view, but I can certainly understand that those that do have families may actually covet my life without them. So enter the midlife crisis phase. So regardless of where you stand on the spectrum, watching your peers and coveting their lives or watching younger people move around carefree, in other words, they have no fear of mortality, may send you spiraling into a spiraling defeat, which you might try to replace with stuff. The common stereotype is the sports car, but there are other things as well. My personal experience is that I want to learn it all. I want to try everything and I can't stop. Knowledge is power. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. But not really. This is a new aspect of myself that I'm discovering, which isn't bad, but it's definitely a state, a different state of mind than I was accustomed to. So maybe this is the phase in my life where not only am I getting older, but wiser as well. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings and bad painting. Hopefully there are some parts of this that you can relate to. And if you can, please let me know in the comments. Um, if you can't, maybe add something that you relate to and maybe I didn't think of. And maybe I'll have a sequel to this. More Five more things about getting old, which I know that there are tons of things about getting old. Um, and I just covered some of the things that I'm noticing. But Anyway, just let me know in the comments. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, just click on my portrait on the right. You can also click on the bell to get notifications when I post. I try to update as much as I can having a full-time job that has a one hour commute, but I'm also trying to learn my niche. So please bear with me and uh, thank you for listening. I will catch up with you next time. Bye.